Yes, in the today's class, we'll try to complete the solar radiation syllabus so that uh, whatever the remaining equations are pending now. So we'll try to cover them. In the earlier class, we have discussing the monthly average daily global radiations. And from today's class, we'll discuss about monthly average daily diffuse radiations on the horizontal surface. So earlier I have told you there are many equations you can go for calculating the global radiation or the uh, different uh, instantaneous or the hourly radiations, okay, uh, in the form of diffuse or global or in the other forms by using different equations. So similarly here also in this uh, diffuse radiations for monthly average daily diffuse radiations. So here there are many equations given by the different researchers. So one of the researchers, first one you can see, the Liu Jordan, he has worked a lot on solar energy to give the different relations or empirical relations. Uh, those empirical relations are predicting the results within around 15% of uh, errors. So these errors can be overcome with the different equations given by the latest researchers. Now all these equations, what we are discussing, it is with respect to that time of time when the, uh, these books are printed or the papers were presented at that time in 2007 or 5. So in those times, these equations were there. Still today, they are using these equations. Also, at 2020, if you see the scenario of these equations, it might have changed. But at this present scenario, we cannot get those equations properly because uh, some papers may be paid papers or the paid uh, uh, patents may be done from that equations. So that will be very difficult for us. So coming back to these equations, so Liu Jordan, whatever work he has done on that basis, the monthly average daily diffuse radiations. So whatever the daily diffuse radiations he has measured and the monthly average how to measure. So on that basis, he has given that equation. He tells that the ratio between the daily diffuse radiations okay daily diffuse radiations with respect to daily global radiations so that diffuse radiations with respect to global radiations if you take the ratio it can be correlated or it may be proportional with respect to the global radiations with respect to the extraterrestrial radiations and that is given in this cubic equation Okay, I'll tell once again how this Jordan given the equation, first equation, that is, he has taken the global diffuse radiations. Okay, so global and diffuse radiations, once he has took, as per the daily diffuse radiations, he has taken the ratio of daily diffuse radiations that is given by HD bar, that is average for the given month. And HG bar is nothing but the global radiations daily for the given month, that is HG bar can be related as 1.390 minus 4.027 hg bar by h naught bar this is nothing but the monthly average daily global radiations next is again h naught bar that indicates monthly average extraterrestrial radiations so that o indicates outside the earth atmosphere g indicates global radiations or the total radiations plus 5.531 hg bar by h naught bar square minus 3.108 hg bar by h naught bar cube. So this is given by the Jordan. So because of the percentage of error, what we get from the answers. So these equations are uh, mostly not used in our calculations. But if you can remember these equations, you can also use the equations. So next one. Am I audible to all? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Next, one more researchers, Crate and Kader. Both people have dis discussed among themselves and came up with one uh, constant of ratio that is KT, is nothing but the K 
clearness clearness index so that clearness index as you can see that is the ratio between the global or the monthly average global radiations to the monthly average extraterrestrial radiations that is hg bar by h not bar so wherever this term comes or you can also write it as ig bar by i not bar in the sense if you take hourly monthly average or the monthly average hourly diffuse radiations or the global radiations i can consider this ratio same ratio as ig bar by i not bar so to just overcome the problems in the given equation to remember he replaced that hg bar h by h not bar with respect to clearness index kt so here if the kt is 1 or the clearest index is 1 that indicates whatever the extraterrestrial radiations are possible are equally absorbed on the earth surface with the help of global radiations means if the global radiations are equal to extraterrestrial radiations that becomes one value means it may be a completely clear day without any pollution without any snowfall or water droplets or any dust like that so in ca such cases maximum value what you can take is 1 or in other words it may be zero means the global radiations are completely reduced and they are reaching to the earth atmosphere whereas in the same climate if you go to the extraterrestrial radiations the value may be very high in such cases it may be having very low values from 1 to 0 also so like this they have given one ratio that is clearness index kt value which take the ratio of the global and extraterrestrial radiations on hourly basis or on the daily basis uh, similarly another three equation you can see for the diffuse radiation in a daily basis that is given by gopinathan that equation is like this hd by hg is nothing but what daily average or average i can can't tell here because it is not having any bar above the hd value so hd i can call it here as daily diffuse radiations on horizontal surface is indicated by hd divided by daily diffuse radiations on the horizontal surface okay that is global radiations daily global radiation on the horizontal surface that can be denoted by hg so that is given by gopinathan as 0.87813 minus 0.33280 kt bar so kt bar here is nothing but hg bar by h not bar as per above equation so that ratio he has taken minus 0.53039 s bar by s max bar so that is nothing but the sunshine hours for that given day so total sunshine hours s bar within that total hours how many hours the sun was completely shining or completely clear on the sky that can be shown as s max bar so that is given by the gopinathan so due to these two equations of more percentage of error most of the cases we are not using these equations also even for remembering such equations is also very difficult for us so just for study you can just understand how they have come up with the other equations then later modi and sukatme as well as garg and garg these people have come up with the two different equations with a slight change in the ratio and the decimal numbers which are giving the percentage of error very less than 6% with the measured measured values of the solar radiations so when you go for the measurements and compare those results with the calculations by using this modi sukatme or garg equation so those are having the very less percentage of error or very near to the measured values so for that purpose we can refer these two equations or else out of these two you can remember any one and you can solve the problems that is also possible provided we should know for garg equation we should know the sunshine hours ratio or else for the modi and sukatme equation one should know the global radiation on daily basis and the extraterrestrial radiations so if one know these ratios he can substitute in this given problem and he can solve the problem so i'll just read these two equations so as per modi and sukatme they gave the ratio with diffused and global uh, daily average as hd bar by hg bar equal to 1.411 minus 1.696 into bracket hg bar by h not bar 
or the ratio of global daily radiations to the extraterrestrial radiations or you can write it as also kt bar kt bar itself is nothing but hg bar by h not bar so that you can remember by modi and sukarma equation as 1.411 minus 1.696 kt bar that can be also used one more relation is by gurg just change in the decimal points and ratio is 0.8677 minus 0.7365 s bar by s max bar so this is when you have the values of sunshine hours for a given day or the average uh, sunshine hours for a given month if you know that you can substitute and find the values of diffused radiations on the horizontal surface for a given month and or you can find out the global radiations on the horizontal surface for a given month so i hope the concept is very simple here nothing else concept is what we are finding just diffused and global radiations on the monthly average basis by using such equations so remembering equations is one is the challenge what you have to accept here is that clear okay now next part if you see so if you want you can write down these two equations modi and sukarma equation as well as garg equation because what i think is in spite of just reading these equations and understanding the background theory once we start solving the problems you can understand what is the importance of these equations how best you can utilize and predict the solar radiations without measurements that is very important for that we are using the equations otherwise to tell any radiations for a given location we have to take the instruments and you have to wait for their have to time, spend the time and other things and then we have to make a big chart to prepare the data and other things apart from that once you know some known values and other constants so you can directly substitute and get the unknown values without going to the actual locations shall we move to the next slide okay i think hardly here 30 members are joined the class but later those who are absent i am telling to only absent the students those who are watching the videos later also no issues but don't ask the again repetition of these things and other things so already video is recorded you can go through the video still after going for n number of times with the repetition of in the uh, lectures in the video then you can ask some doubts okay because later what happens they are not present for the live classes they may ask for the repetitions so that may make some issue with the regular students those who are sitting for all the classes continuously and listening and following the things properly in the steps so again repetition will be very big issue for me as well as to the regular students also okay so coming to the next part so now we have covered monthly average daily global radiation so hg bar equations earlier class now we completed monthly average daily diffuse radiations both are on the horizontal surfaces still we have not considered any tilt angle beta or the slope s yes, we have not considered now next part you can just observe in this you can read the title monthly average hourly global radiation just what is the change happened here first change is the hourly basis now the notation comes i whenever we call hourly radiations average hourly radiations okay or hourly global radiation hourly diffuse radiations whatever whenever hourly word comes we have to use the capital letter i so i with suffix whatever the alphabet we are writing that denotes either global radiation ig or diffuse radiations id or if it is reflective 
we may use for ir or if it is beam radiation i can go for ib okay so coming to the different concepts given by the different uh, researchers here so earlier by collier and perrier and rabel these three people worked on the concept of hourly global radiations they come up with one of the equation so here that equation is nothing but ratio of hourly global radiations monthly average hourly global radiations ig bar to the ratio of global uh, daily or monthly average daily global radiations hg bar that you have seen in the last uh, slide so this ratio can be related as i not bar by h not bar into bracket a plus b cos omega so omega is our angle so once you know the our angle and ab constants and remaining uh, at least three radiations values so one can find out either hourly global radiation by this equation or also the daily global radiations also that is hg bar any value you can find out not an issue but this equation is preferred for finding the hourly global radiation that is ig bar so what is the first term we are writing that we need to find out in these equations so for that focus is given and according to that these give, uh, equations are related no doubt you can also find h not bar also extra terrestrial radiations on hourly basis i not bar you can find out or you can also find out the extra terrestrial monthly average uh, uh, global radiations or the extra terrestrial radiations using h not bar also as a unknown and these three people perrier rabel they gave ab values or the constants as 0.409 plus 0.5016 sin of our angle minus 60 degrees and b can be found out by using those relations 0.6609 minus 0.4767 sin of omega s minus 60 degrees so according to their relations and empirical uh, analysis they have given these constants how to be found out with ab okay and also you can just observe the units if you see the hg bar or ig bar i not bar whatever the monthly average we are finding with respect to daily basis or the hourly basis based on diffused and uh, global radiations or the extra terrestrial radiations the unit is kilojoules per meter square hour now if you want to convert it in kilowatts okay so what you have to do now so one has to divide or multiply by 3600 so that depends on the given units so if you don't want hour so you can find out for the per second so in such cases you can just divide or multiply by 3600 if you want to convert it into kilowatt or kilowatt per meter square or if you want to keep it in same units like kilojoules per meter square hour so 3600 value you have to remember so when to multiply or divide we'll see in the numericals because earlier classes we have discussed the radiation is measured in kilowatt per hour sorry kilowatt per meter square for a given area of the horizontal surface but here they are telling in hourly basis or some books they have given a secondly basis okay so like this any units to be converted so keep in mind what unit they have given and according to that unit we are finding or we need to convert that into some si units okay so coming to the earlier equation only due to the percentage of error of the results we are not preferring it uh, also if you pre prefer the percentage of error may be more okay that depends on the given equations now later this gamald that is written below here that researcher given one more relation he just added one more term to the entire equation that is h ig bar by h g bar equal to i not bar by h not bar equal to sorry into a plus b cos omega divided by fc so this constant value he introduced inside this equation with ab so can see the complication complication is there but whatever the gamard has achieved the uh, less percentage of error is very important here so he introduced this term where using constant a and b one should find out this constant fc and that is given as per this uh, bracket here a plus 0.5 b 
into bracket pi omega s by 180. So that is required for converting radians into degrees. Minus sine omega s cos omega s divided by sine omega s minus pi omega s by 180 cos omega s. So this Gamert equation, what he introduced with uh, a constant value f c, one can find out more accurately. I am not telling he cannot find out or value is wrong. Value is near that you can tell. So one can find out a very nearly values with the all these radiations, maybe hourly basis or maybe daily basis. One can find out the very accurate values. Now these two equations, if you see, these equations are focusing more on finding hourly global radiations. That is Ig bar in monthly average. And question comes: Month means what? A month means it may contain 30 days or 31 days. For example, February, if you take it, may be 28 days or 29 days, depends on the leap year. So, like this, for a given month, that much number of days will be there. That much number of readings we need to take by using the instruments. Then we are going to average it. So, I hope the point is clear. Okay, so please follow up the equations and also practice it. Next part, the title. There is a little change. Now we are moving from global radiation to the diffuse radiation. So relation between. This global diffuse radiation and beam radiation we have discussed in the earlier classes. That is, total radiation on hourly basis. If you take, I can write it as I total, I suffix total, or I can write it as I suffix global Ig. Can be given as sum of beam radiations on hourly basis plus diffuse radiation on hourly basis. I can write it as Ib plus Id is nothing but I total or Ig. Same equation can be followed for the daily. Radiations also on only changes what h value h denotes daily basis i denotes hourly basis for particular hour say for example today we have class from 2:30 to 3:30 or 3:30 uh, to 3:15 I can take only those time and I can find out for a given month in entire year which month is going to give the best solar radiations or the maximum. Solar radiations that I can find out by taking daily values for the given month, or what I can do, I can take only this hour, 2:30 to 3:15. Uh, uh, I can take. I can find out only for this hour every day, and this becomes what hourly average for that given month. Okay. So coming back to these equations again, Leo Leo Jordan. For the hourly diffuse radiations, he suggested we can take the ratio of Id bar by Hd bar, that is for the diffuse radiations, hourly with respect to the diffuse radiations with daily radiations. If you take average, that ratio can be equal to. See the biggest change here. What he is telling this ratio of diffuse radiations, hourly basis and daily radiations, is equal to. The same ratio of extraterrestrial radiations. What is that? Extraterrestrial average hourly radiation values to the monthly average daily diffuse radiations on extraterrestrial surface. That both ratios are equal. This is the huge change. Means you can correlate or you can make equal sign. And you can also find out by this one of the unknown. Also, to make some improvements and to make some more accuracy as per the measured values, Satyamurthy and Lahiri also given some relations here at the bottom. You can use any one, whichever you feel simple, above one or below one. You can use any one. Okay. So here, bottom side, if you see what they have given, the ratio of this Id bar by Hd bar can be related as. A dash plus B dash cos omega. So A dash B dash again they redefined into 
i bar not divided by h bar not so what they did they only multiplied with this bracket a dash b dash cos omega so cos omega omega value we can find out so a dash as per these scientists what they tell is if the ratio of daily diffuse radiation average for a given month with respect to monthly average global radiations hg bar if you take the ratio hd bar by H, hg bar that we need to find out first for this relation once you find out based on the value of that hd bar by hg bar that is if it is 0.1 to 0.7 go for the first relation a dash can be written as 0.5 plus 0.27 divided by hd bar by hg bar so that hd bar by hg bar value should be between 0.1 to 0.7 or one more is if it is more than 0.7 or up to 0.9 you can go by second equation for constant a that is 0.76 plus into bracket 0.113 divided by hd bar by hg bar that ratio b dash will be same for all the values of hd bar by hg bar ratio so that relation is for b dash constant 2 into 1 minus a dash into bracket sin omega s minus omega s cos omega s divided by omega s minus 0.5 sin 2 omega s so now you can decide which equation we can refer either the liu jordan the old equation or bottom equation any one you can refer but what happens finally is we are going to get the lot of answers because of the various equations now my lookout is for a given question and the required result whatever the equation you use and find out the results no matter but the result at least it should be near to some 15% or 20% at least if it is crossing more than 50% then we have to look out for the other issue what i am feeling is in any time if you go for whatever the equations you feel very easy and simple and whatever the range of answer is required so that range i will check if it is not in the range or in the proper percentage of error then we'll see about the cutting of some limited marks for the given answer so like this what we can do is we can make out some simple approach for these all big equations or remembering all these different different conditions and other things is that okay for everyone you can refer any simple equations for the given conditions you can substitute the values you can get the results later we'll see the range of values whether it is matching with some answer or no or whether it is in the range of a given low to high values विवेक पाटिल तपन कुलकर्णी आई थिंक दे आर एक्चुअली एबसेंट फॉर द क्लास वेद गावडे यस ही इज अटेंटिव गोपाल लंबाणी इज अटेंटिव ओके दैट्स व्हाट आई टोल्ड यू only equations may be difficult but theory behind the equations is nothing so please write down the titles which defines our various type of conditions on those conditions we have to come to the particular equation so next we'll take now from all these above relations later this ashray model has come up into picture that is nothing but the american society for heating refrigeration refrigerating air conditioning engineers that society came with one more model again this is recollecting all the basics and making one more new equation 
to co combine all the relations so here as i told you on the hourly basis if you want to find out the radiations so title is with cloudless sky so provided this ashray model can be implemented where the sky should be entirely complete day should be clear or for that given hour that sky should be very clear and as for the basic is concerned the global radiation in hourly basis ig is equal to the beam radiation plus diffuse radiation for that given hour that is i value and ib can be found out by using ib and cos theta z so as we discussed in the earlier class this cos theta z is nothing but if the beam radiations are inclined to the zenith line or the vertical line to the horizontal surface then this zenith angle exists if the zenith angle is zero or say for example sun rays are parallel to the vertical line of horizontal surface then this becomes theta z becomes zero value will be one and ibn is nothing but the the solar rays which are falling on the given direction that is ibn with the normal beam radiation with the given normal that angle what it prepares that beams we are calling it as ibn so beam radiations can be also found out by this relation and total radiations you just substitute that value in the above equation you can find out ig equal to in place of ib i can write ib and cos theta z plus id and in this what ashray model has given is they also found out some constants they also uh, prepared a chart of different locations or different cities where uh, some engineers or some people can plan to plant a solar plants so they also gave some constants so from which one can find out either beam radiations are more or uh, diffuse radiations are more so the first equation if you see ibn for the beam radiations normal to the sun rays a, a constant a into exponential of into bracket minus b divided by cos theta z okay so here a b are the constants how they found out we'll see in the charts or what values they have given we'll see in the chart and for the diffuse radiation if they want to find out for the diffuse radiation what is the magnitude for a given hour then they can go for using constant c with that ib when value what is found out above so this model is given by ashray to find out separately other than that average here we are not finding average just to focus on all the equations here we are not finding any average value what we are doing for a given time of hours these relations can be used not as an average later for 30 days or 31 days you can find out all these 31 values and you can take the average that will become ib bar or id bar for the given month that is monthly average hourly radiations i think by this equation also you can understand the theory behind this so only for a given hour one can find out ashray model for the finding all these results and this chart for abc constant what they are using so this is again prepared by the jordan and ikbal only so later ikbal revised the chart and like this he has proposed for a, a given month and other things so these values on clear days they found out for a given location so a may be in this form like one uh, reading i'll read here in september so september 21 if you see constant a watt per meter square energy what is received on the surface is 1136 see that watt per meter square itself represents us it may be total radiation generally because it is in thousand range of thousand after uh, absorption of the atmospheric uh, atmosphere the radiation may become less from the extraterrestrial quantity so that quantity is 1136 watt per meter square next b c are the different constants depending upon their uh, different correlations or empirical relations uh, from their own assumptions they have given 0.165 and 0.121 for the given month or september 21 as a mid of the month one of the value they have found out that value because as i told this ashray model is not using for a given month or it is not finding any average value it is just going for that hour in september 
and it is finding the unknown values from these equations. The next part is, see, please remember at the title, don't men I have not mentioned monthly average. So this is not related to the monthly average, but it is related to only average, sorry, only hourly radiations with respect to total beam and diffuse radiations. Only that thing. The next last uh, part of this syllabus is of the given chapter is the solar radiation on the tilted surface. This is very important on the tilted surface. So here everyone knows that until now we have discussed about the horizontal surface. So on the horizontal surface, we didn't consider the slope or angle beta with respect to horizontal surface, which is tilted. We are not considered. We took the equations and we tried to understood what is the behind uh, components of that equation with respect to monthly average, daily or hourly, diffused, beam, okay, or only on the hourly basis, how to use the ASHRAE model. Now coming to the tilted surface, so here they have given some points to understand. So measuring instruments give the value of solar radiation falling on a horizontal surface. Okay, but most of the solar equipments, if you see, like a flat plate collector in the water heaters or the PV cells, if you see, or the plates, the solar equipments are tilted surfaces for absorbing the solar radiation with some tilt angle with the horizontal. So that's why it is important because in real life, we are not using horizontal surface in the many applications. Many applications, we are going for the tilted surface only. Then we have to calculate the flux on such surfaces. And the flux is sum of beam and diffuse radiations falling directly on the surface and radiation reflected on the surface from the surroundings. Now see here, in this topic, the reflected radiations are the extra thing. What should be added? Why? Because until now, on the horizontal surface, it is only facing, facing towards the sky. So we receive only beam and diffuse radiation. But when we talk about vertical surface or the tilted surface, it is facing towards part of the face is towards sky, part of the face is towards earth. So that what will happen? We assume some radiations or the reflection of the radiations are falling on the tilted surface also. The point is clear. So this tilted surface, if you focus for the given beam radiations, so all of you know the beam radiation, reflection, diffuse radiation, everything. I'll just go through the ratios and the equations. So here, one can define the tilt factor. That is nothing but the beam radiation or the flux for a given area. Flux means for per unit area falling on a tilted surface to that of the horizontal surface. So always the flux or the radiation falling on the tilted surface is less. To, with respect to the horizontal surface, if the sun is about the zenith. But if it is the sun is tilted with some angle with respect to horizontal or with respect to normal to the horizontal, then if you tilt the surface towards sun, then it will be absorbing maximum. That's why the earth is tilted towards the sun. So whenever this flat plate collector or the PV cells are kept focusing towards sun, then maximum radiation will be received by only tilted surface only if the sun is tilted by some angle. That's why this tilting of the surface is very much needed because throughout the year, the sun is not exactly taking the same path with the same inclination. It is always changing the path. So maximum time, if the tilt factor, if you see, or the tilting of the sun and the earth angle, if you see, it is tilted to some direction. So always we have to go for the tilted surfaces to absorb maximum radiation from the tilted earth. So that ratio between radiation falling or the radiation flux falling on the tilted surface to the horizontal surface, if you consider, that is called as tilt factor, that is RB. Now if you see the angles, so if it is tilted or without tilting, if you see, I can write cos theta as what? cos theta is 
yes angle of incidence of the solar radiations on the surface can be given as sin delta sin phi minus beta this we have seen in the earlier classes where we have found out omega equation or the hourly angle equation so from that relation only this equation is taken from the earlier classes so one can write cos theta or the angle of incidence on the tilted surface can be written as sin delta sin phi minus beta plus cos delta cos omega cos of phi minus delta so only thing is what phi you replace with phi minus delta for the tilted surfaces and if you take the horizontal surface as i told just remove minus beta work is over that will become zenith so incident angle of the solar radiations without tilt it will become zenith angle cos theta z so i can write it as sin phi sin delta plus cos phi cos delta cos omega or you recall our angle write it in the form of cos theta z then if you take the tilt factor rb at the bottom that ratio you can write that is cos theta equation divided by cos theta z equation that will give us tilt factor so i think time is 3:15 now still one or two minutes are pending so anything you want to ask we'll stop here our discussion about the class anything you want to discuss you can just ask here in the chat box see still we have left with one more class i think so still we need one more class to just cover the equations only then later uh, problems is it okay sir if we don't attend the solar class I have attended ncs class completely one hour or 45 minutes vishwa hiremat you were attentive okay so can you just tell me what is the meaning of hg bar vishwa hiremat what is the meaning of hg bar yes anyone else can try this question the meaning of hg bar so sandeep kulkarni don't know the answer he left the meeting what do you mean by hg bar average global radiation very good almost you are 80% correct one word is missing amrut mannurkar global diffuse radiation no i am telling hg bar hg means global hd bar you are correct viresh you are correct with diffuse if i tell hd bar global diffuse radiation if i take average it will be hd bar hourly average global radiation others no hourly average global radiation is denoted by ig bar what is hg bar see many are not attentive in the class and only half people are attending the classes 30 members maximum yearly global radiation yearly we are not finding only for a given year we are not finding radiations complete year we are going by the month because there is a change in seasons h g bar very simple what h indicates one of you can reply what what h indicates h is radiation then what is i radiation okay what is i then i value means what 
yes i is hourly h is daily radiation then hg bar so this is how online classes are going yes daily global radiation hourly global radiation is ig bar daily global radiation is i g bar means average you have to write if you tell monthly average daily global radiation that becomes hg bar if you tell monthly average hourly global radiation that becomes ig bar this you understood everyone 30 members all 30 members only four are replying okay we'll stop the class here in the next class will continue with the remaining equations and we will start with the equations so that once we start the problem then in the numericals or the problem solving so people those who are left with the earlier classes they can understand the remaining terms and equations okay thank you